Let's go to page 37 in your grammar books. Page 37. Oh, now everybody's coming in. Hi, you guys. I just started. So we're on page 37 in the grammar book. Phoenix and Cash are here. And it looks like Mariah's coming. Okay. Page 37, we're talking about adjectives. I think we've talked about this before, but let's do a little review here. Um, they describe a noun. That's the job of the adjective. So notice right here, it says an adjective tells which one, what kind, how many, or whose. That's how you can tell if the word is an adjective. You ask those questions. So the first step is look for the noun. That's the person, place, or thing, right? Good morning, Mariah. Good morning. We're on page 37, okay, in the grammar book. So when you look for the noun in the sentence, then you can ask these questions. Which one, what kind, how many, or whose? See, there it is again on in bold there. And that will tell you the adjective in the sentence. So it says an article adjective, we already know these, a, an, and the, is a special type of adjective that signals that a noun is coming. You can test if a word is an adjective by putting the word between an article and a noun. And it shows you over here, there's a little test. Remember, the is an article, right? We already know what those are. The blank pen and pen is a noun. So it's like this, pen like this, that's a noun. So if I were to put a word in between, like the blue pen or the black pen or the skinny pen or the fat pen or the big pen, um, that works. But sometimes there's other adjectives that might not exactly work in that sentence, maybe like the fuzzy pen, unless you have a fluffy pen that has a lot of fuzz on it. <laughs> um, Anyway, that is a simple test you can use to help you figure out if it's an adjective. So here we have the happy soldiers talked. So the noun is soldiers, right? Those are people. And then right before that comes, usually comes the adjective. So if I ask myself, what kind of soldiers? Happy soldiers. And that tells us that's an adjective, happy. Look at this one. The dwarf gave his gift to the soldier. Now we have the word dwarf, that's a noun, but it only has the before it, so there's no adjective there. Gift is also a noun. And if I ask whose gift, his gift, even though his can be a pronoun. We've used that before for a pronoun before, but in this sentence, it's telling whose gift, right? So that changes it to an adjective. It's telling whose gift. And then, of course, soldier is a noun, but we only have the before it, so there's no adjective there, okay? Um, find the nouns and pronouns in the sentence, and once you find the noun or the pronoun, ask the adjective questions to identify the adjective. You're going to write ADJ, which is short for adjective, above the words that are adjectives. So here's an example down below. The three soldiers used the dwarf's first gift to wish for a fine castle. Their gifts pleased them, okay? So we have a bunch of adjectives in here. We have the noun soldiers, and if you ask how many, there's three, that's an adjective, okay? And then here's um, the noun gift, it's a thing, right? Which one, which gift? The first gift, oh, and the dwarfs first gift. So those are two adjectives together. It tells you whose and which one. And then here the word castle, if you ask yourself what kind of castle, the fine castle, that's an adjective. It tells more about the castle. And then the last one, gifts again, whose gifts? Their gifts. 
So remember, those are the big questions that you need to remember for adjectives. Which one, what kind, how many, and whose, okay? Then down here, it mentions quality adjective. Now, this is something, it's still an adjective, but a quality adjective is a, is a word that really gives more information visually, like it gives an image to the reader. For example, if I have the noun rainbow, that's a thing, right? So it's a noun. And I could say the pretty rainbow. Pretty would be an adjective. And that's a good adjective, but it's not a quality adjective. So like a quality adjective could be the colorful rainbow. When I use that word colorful, now you're thinking of all the colors of the rainbow, right? Red, orange, yellow, green, and blue, and purple. All of the colors, if I say colorful, so see how that word colorful gives the, gives you more of an image. And you could say pretty, that's still a good adjective, but it, it doesn't really, pretty just kind of leaves it a little bit generic. Like you're not sure, does it have all the colors or maybe it's just kind of bright or something? Or maybe you can, sometimes you know how you can only see like red and kind of orangey maybe. Yeah. But if I say colorful, that makes it sound like, you know, all the colors are there. So that's an example. We're going to be eventually using quality adjectives in your writing. And we'll talk about that more when we get to the writing part. Okay. Nothing on the back of that. So let's go to the practice page here. And I'm going to have Phoenix read the sentence today, please. Gardens of rare roses and lawns with soft grass grew around the castle. Good. Nice reading. And then rare. Who knows what rare means? What is that word rare? Anybody know how to explain what rare means? Lacey, what is rare? Hard to find. Hard to find. Good. I like how you said that. Um, it could be something unusual or uncommon, but yes, hard to find is it. Excellent definition. So let's put check mark there. Article A, comma, and comma, the. Go ahead and write those in until we get used to that. And there's only one. So go ahead and find it and put AR on top of it. And then you can check it off. Nouns. Let's see, Liana, there's five nouns in here. Can you help us find those nouns? Um, Remember, those are the castle? castle is a noun. Yep, yeah, those are person, place, or thing. You're right, castle. What else? There's a bunch more in there. There's four more. Sometimes it helps to think of like things you can touch. So looking at these words, what are some things that you can actually touch? Roses? Yes, roses. Uh, grass? Yes. Grass, good. Two more. Mm. Garden? Yes, good. Gardens you can touch. One more. Mm. If you're not sure, we can see if somebody else can help you too. Lawn? Yes, good. Is that what you were gonna say, Phoenix? Yeah, lawns, good. And that's basically like your front yard if you have grass, good. Adjectives, um, I'm gonna have cash. Remember adjectives, 
usually come before a noun to give to tell which one or how many or what kind. Do you see any adjectives in here, Cash? Okay, you're still muted. Rare. Good. What else? One more. Soft. Yes, good, because that's describing the grass. Good. What kind of grass? It's soft grass. What kind of roses? Rare roses. Good. Um. All right, Mariah, what about capital? Where do we need a capital? In the beginning. In the beginning, gardens. And then Lacey, what about the end mark? What do we need at the end of the sentence? Period. Good. Easy peasy cheesy. Awesome. All right, you guys. So your list is getting a little longer, but still pretty short. That's it for that lesson. Uh, did you guys have any questions about it? Anything we talked about? Okay. No. No? Good. Okay. Later, you can write it down here. And then your homework will be the next three pages, which is 40, 41, and 42. So we're done with grammar. You can set that aside now. Okay. And go ahead and get out your binders. And in the front pocket should be everything you're working on right now um, for camels. So go ahead and get everything out of your front pocket of your binder for camels. Get all my stuff out too. Let's see. Here we go. And we're gonna keep going on this. Oh, before you put your binders totally away, I do want you to turn to, we're not gonna take out anything, but I do want you to write something down in here. So go to the kind of the back where you see that tab kind of almost to the very back. It's called stylistic techniques. Let's find that tab called stylistic techniques. And then go ahead and turn that tab and you should see this yellow page in here. Give me a thumbs up if you see that page. Good, I see yours, Lacey. Good, Mariah. So stylistic techniques, you don't have to get it out, but I do want you to add something to it. So leave it in the rings. And you should have, for number one, you should have L-Y adverb. You guys have that written down? Okay, so for number two, do you guys have anything next to number two yet? Not yet. Okay, so number two, I want you to put who slash which clause. So go ahead and write that in next to number two who slash which clause. And we talked a little bit about that last week. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that, but I wanted to make sure you added it to your stylistic techniques. You're gonna see it on your checklist now too. So once you put that on there, who, which clause for number two, we're done with that. So keep it in your rings and go ahead and close up your binder. Do we write it anywhere? No, it should be right next to number two. Mm -hmm. Okay. At the top under dress ups. Okay. And now we'll go back to those pages that you got out earlier. So leave, leave that yellow page in there. You can close up your binder now. I just wanna make sure you added that. And now, um, Remember last week we started practicing these who, which clauses here? We did this page together. This is page 43, and I think we stopped on the Picasso one. So I wanted to make sure to take time to finish this page. Mine is blank because I, I reuse it right for my classes. So I use a plastic page on top of it, but you should have one through four already done. So looking at number five, this is page 43. It comes from the stack of papers you got out from the pocket. 
Okay, so number five, remember we're practicing how to add a who and wh or a which clause to these sentences to make them into one sentence. We worked on it a little bit last week. So it says, I work hard to earn money. I am saving for a jet ski. Do you guys know what a jet ski is, by the way? It's a, it's kind of like a boat, but it's only for one, maybe two people. And you sit on it like a motorcycle, right? And it has handles like a motorcycle, but it goes on the water. Yeah, I've like heard cool. of it. I've never ridden one before, but I've seen them. They seem like they're pretty cool. So does anybody have any ideas of how we can combine those two sentences using who or which? If you have an idea, raise your hand. How can we combine, I work hard to earn money, I am saving for a jet ski? You guys have any ideas on that? Phoenix, what do you think? I work hard to earn money, which I am saving for a jet ski. Good. I like that. That's a good one. Let's do that one. I work hard to earn money. And now we're going to put a comma after money, which I am saving for a jet ski. Now, I um, I'm glad you said which because it's talking about money. Money is not a person, right? That's a thing. So remember, when you're talking about a thing or a place or something like that, you use the word which after it. But if you're talking about a person, that's when you use who. So let's make sure to underline which there too, because when you're practicing this, you're going to be adding these who, which clauses to your writing now. And when you add it to your writing, you're just going to underline who or which. You don't have to underline the whole phrase or I mean the whole clause, just which or who. Okay. Down at the bottom, it's a little different here. It does say uh, indicate the following are complete with a C or incomplete with an I sentences. So some of these are complete, they're good. So we put a C next to it and some of them are incomplete, meaning they're, they're not good sentences. So we're gonna put I for incomplete. So I'm gonna have Mariah help me with number one. It says, I have a special pen which I use for writing poetry. Does that sound like a complete sentence to you or incomplete sentence, Mariah? It's complete. It's good. I have a special pen, which I use for writing poetry. That sounds good. Number two, um, this is going to be for Lacey. My father, who loves hiking and hunting. Do you think that sentence is complete or incomplete? Incomplete. Good, incomplete, because it feels like it's leaving you hanging, right? What happens is that word who steals the verb loves. And now you need another verb after it later in order for it to make sense. And we'll talk more about that in a minute here. And then the last one uh, for Liana, I met a man who said he could eat a horse. <laughs> that's kind of weird. I think it's just a saying. I don't think it means literally eating a horse, but that's how hungry he was. Do you think that sounds complete as far as the actual wording here? I met a man who said he could eat a horse. Is that complete or incomplete, Liana? Uh, complete? Yes, that one is complete. Even though it's a weird <laughs> sentence. Um, but the word met is here. That's a verb. And then inside the who clause, he could eat. Those are verbs too. So that's the thing to remember. Next to the who or which, there has to be a verb there. But there also has to be a verb on the main part of the sentence too. Okay. Good. All right. We're done with that one. So let's look back 
on your keyword outline here. Go ahead and get that out next. Keyword outline. And you guys, for your homework, should have finished 789. And then you were supposed to write your paragraph. Give me a thumbs up if you finished your paragraph. Good, Liana. I see your thumb. And then did anybody else get a chance to finish it yet? Did you finish yet, Mariah? Or are you still working on yours? No, I just had it wrote down um, the, um, the number one. So I didn't put it in a full um, paper. Oh, okay, so you're still working on that? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you have to finish this and then write your paragraph. How about Mike? I mean, um, Phoenix and Cash, did you guys get to finish your paragraph yet? Uh, I'm pretty sure I did mine. I'm trying to find it. Okay. Remember when you guys are working on stuff, always keep it in that front pocket when you're in the middle of the week working on stuff. So it stays together. That's the best place to put it. Um, I see that you have like a little notebook and you can use a notebook if that's all you have, but I really like these loose papers because then you can keep them in your binder. So if you can get those maybe, but otherwise, yeah, everything needs to stay together. Okay. Um, and Lacey, I know you're on vacation. Did you get a chance to write the paragraph yet or not yet? You did. Okay, good. So. We're going to move on to the paragraph two now. So you guys finished paragraph one on your keyboard <clears throat> outline. Now we're going to focus on paragraph two. So let's look on the original article here called Camels. This is page 41. This should be part of what you got in your front pocket there. And we're going to focus on finishing this keyword outline so that you can write the second paragraph this week. So this report that you're doing about camels is two paragraphs long. You did the first paragraph. And now we're going to do the second paragraph. So I'm going to go ahead and just read it first. And then we're going to go back and fill in your keyword outline. OK, this paper is underneath here. It says here, humans, I'm down here at the second paragraph, humans have used camels for millennia. They have mainly been trained as pack animals, but also for racing and warfare. They can be taught to pull plows and carts. Camel milk is highly nutritious. In parts of Africa, camel urine, you guys know what urine is, right? <laughs> That's your pee. It's kind of gross. Camel urine, that's that camel pee, is thought to be medicinal. I'm going to stop there for a second, but that word medicinal, you'll, you'll see the root word there, or the base word is medicine. So in Africa, in parts of Africa, camel urine, which is pee, is thought to be medicinal, which means is used for medicine. So their pee is used for medicine in Africa, just letting you know, okay? In many Middle Eastern countries, camel meat is served at feasts. So we don't eat camel meat in America, but in the Middle Eastern countries, like Iran and Iraq and Pakistan, places like that, they eat camel meat. No, thank you. I don't know how it tastes. Though. <clears throat> Maybe it's good. I don't know. I don't think I want to know. <laughs> okay, this gets grosser. I'm just going to tell you now it gets grosser, okay? Nomads, by the way, nomads are people who don't have homes. They just wander or travel, right? They're always traveling. So they bring their, they walk around with their homes with them, maybe a tent and a bed, and then, you know, they, they bring their food with them wherever they go. So nomads in Northern Africa may drink camel blood mixed with camel milk to sustain them on long desert journeys. Ew. 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 Nasty. Okay, but if they're about to die, I guess that's a good idea. But no, thank you. <laughs> 
camel blood mixed with camel milk. So I don't know how they got the blood. Obviously they probably had to cut the camel somewhere. I feel bad for the camel because poor camel, right? But blood has protein and iron in it. It's, it's, if they're going to die, if they don't have, if the people are, are going to die and they don't have a way to survive, that's what they do. It's pretty gross and kind of sad for the camel. I don't think they kill the camel though, because the camel still has, you know, milk and is still helping them carry their stuff. So anyway, um, camel hair is light and strong. Thus it is useful for clothes, blankets, tents, and rugs. In Arab cultures, the camel symbolizes endurance and patience. Endurance just means like being able to walk a long distance without getting too tired, right? They, so that's what camels can do. And especially you can imagine in the desert, it's hot and dry. There's not a lot of water around, right? But camels can can handle it. You know, they're probably carrying water for the people because obviously we can't go very long without water, especially when it's hot outside. We need water. So, uh, but a camel can go a long time without water. That's what endurance means. It means it can survive really harsh con conditions, right? It can survive heat without water. They can walk a long time, all day long, and they don't get tired. I mean, it's pretty impressive. So they symbolize, you know, a camel is a symbol to them. Like for us, the, the eagle, the bald eagle is a symbol to America for freedom. So for these people in the Arab cultures, the camel is a symbol to them of endurance and patience. Obviously camels have a lot of patience, right? Especially if the people are like, drinking their blood and stuff. It's like, they have a lot of patience. So they still like the people. And I don't know how, you know, that's, that's a pretty, uh, pretty amazing animal in my mind. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, interesting information here, super interesting in the second paragraph, the first paragraph is basically telling us what breed, what species, how many humps it has, where it's located, good information, kind of boring, but here we've got, whoa, Camels just kind of leveled up for us, right? They're like amazing animals that can do a lot. And uh, by the way, that word warfare here, um, where it says, where was that? Oh, here, racing. By the way, they race camels. I bet that's pretty funny to watch because their legs are so long. They're kind of like goofy looking when they run. Their whole body yeah. are like, do, 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 do. <laughs> So I bet that's fun to watch camel racing. The guy on top though has got to hold on. You know, I those guys aren't very smooth when they run. The camel's like dong 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 dong. So I bet it's kind of fun to watch them race. Okay, and then warfare just means like during wartime, uh, maybe they carried supplies for the soldiers. Okay, during warfare, that's what that means during the war times. So they probably carried food and stuff, but maybe they also carried supplies that they needed for war. And then pulling plows and carts, you know, plows are the, the, the big tools that have a big sharp point down at the bottom that, that create like a groove in the dirt to put seeds in for when you're planting things. Um, and so those, those tools are really heavy for a person to carry, but a camel can just drag it behind them and, uh, do, does all the heavy work for the people. And then of course, carts, you know, carry stuff for the people too. So anyway, looking at our keyword outline, now we're going to chip away at this and go sentence by sentence again, pulling out those keywords. So what you're learning to do here is look at an actual article that has facts in it, right? This is real information about real animals in real places, right? It's different than the fox and the stork and the bald man and the fly and all those are more fun, like fables, like Aesop fables type stories. This is different. This is a actual information. 
And you're going to do the same thing, which is pretty cool. That means you can use these keyword outlines for really any kind of writing that you do. And so for this writing, you're going to give a report about camels. Remember the Roman numeral represents the very first sentence of the paragraph. So Roman numeral two represents the first sentence of the second paragraph here. Humans have used camels for millennia. By the way, millennia, that tells us um, how many years. Millennia. That's thousands. It gets a thousand. Yes. So millennium, you're right, Phoenix. Millennium is a thousand, but millennia is the plural for that. So it's thousands, thousands. Century, you've probably heard that word before. Century means a hundred. But if I say centuries, plural, that means hundreds. So here, thousands. Humans have used camels for millennia, which means thousands of years. Okay. That's a long time, by the way. Probably since the beginning, they've used camels. I don't know if you've ever read the Bible, but I think camels are mentioned in there too. Donkeys mm -hmm. are actually. Okay. Um, so looking at that sentence, humans have used camels for millennia. Let's start with Liana. What are some key words we can pull out from that sentence to put in our, our outline? looking for keywords. It's not too big of a sentence, so it should be pretty easy. What do you see here that's important in that sentence to write down? Humans? Humans, for sure. What else? Another keyword, Liana. Mm. We don't need have or used. Those are just filler words, right? Those aren't keywords. But what about camels? Camels is a keyword. Even though we're talking about camels, we already know we're talking about camels. But that's such a short sentence. We can use that yeah. word. Camels. Yeah. And millennia? And then millennia. Good. Millen, make sure I spell it right. I did not spell it right. That needs to be an I. M I L L E N N I A. Millennia means thousands. Okay. Good. Uh, Lacey, how about the next sentence? They have mainly been trained as pack animals, but also for racing and warfare. Trained? Trained, that's a good one. What else? Mm -hmm. Racing. Racing, good. One more. Warfare. Warfare, good. We also know they talked about pack animals. So you guys can pick which two you want to talk about in your report. You can say pack animals, or racing or warfare, you decide which ones are your keywords. They don't have to match us exactly. By the way, pack animals means it's not like they, it's not like wolves where they hunt in a pack. It's a different kind of pack. Pack animals is they carry stuff, right? That's what that means, pack animals. So I think um, you said trained and you said racing and warfare. I'm going to put that, but if you guys have a different idea. You can make it your own. You know, you don't have to copy exactly what I have. It's okay to change it up a little bit. Uh, let's see. Cash. Next sentence. They can be taught to pull plows and carts. What do you think? Pull. Yes. What else? Uh -oh. Pals. 
Plows, good. Can I see a little bit more? Oh, I'm sorry. They can be taught to pull plows and carts. Carts? Carts, yep, I agree. Good, pull, plows, carts. Next for Phoenix, short sentence, camel milk is highly nutritious. Camel milk nutritious. Good. Or you could do milk highly nutritious either way. Yeah, I think that because they already know we're talking about camels. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's do that. Milk highly. By the way, highly is. Uh, oh, it's not an adverb. It's one of those imposters. I'll tell you about that in a second. Nutritious. Oops, I spelled nutritious wrong. Oh my. I've told you guys spelling is not my forte. So sometimes, sometimes I misspell words and it's okay to tell me about it because sometimes I don't even realize I do. <laughs> but hey, I got my master's degree in college. So if you struggle with spelling, you can still make it to the end, okay? Don't let that stop you. I use Siri a lot. I say, hey, Siri, how do you spell nutritious? And she tells me, so it helps. <laughs> okay. I found oh, she heard me. No, no, I was just kidding. Okay, there we go. Whew. <laughs> I mean, she's wonderful and horrible all at the same time, right? Okay. Good. Milk, highly nutritious. I was going to talk to you about that word highly. It does have an L-Y. And you might think it's an adverb, but if you're talking about the word nutritious, th these are adjectives. They're describing the milk. So sometimes an ly word is more of an adjective than it is an adverb. Because if you, you know, if you ask the question like we learned in our grammar, what kind of milk? Highly nutritious milk. So that's telling us it's an adjective. So sometimes you got to watch out for that. Not all L-Y words are adverbs. So think about that as you're, as you're writing your, your paragraphs. Okay, uh, keep going here. This is for Cash. Oh, wait, did Cash go? Cash already went. Did you go, Phoenix? Okay, so it's Mariah's turn. Are you there, Mariah? I think you might have trouble with your camera, it looks like. Okay, we'll skip Mariah. We'll come back to you, okay, if you can hear me. So Liana, back to you. Oh, wait, there she is. Can you hear me, Mariah? Yeah, I'm here. In, so this is your sentence. In parts of Africa, camel urine is thought to be medicinal. Sorry, you get the gross one. <laughs> so what do you think we should put in our outline there? Go ahead and unmute when you're ready. Mm. Af Africa? I agree. We need Africa because that's telling us where it is. Mm. Urine and yeah. medical? Yes. And this word is medicinal. It's a weird word, but it's, it's talking about medicine. So you're right. Let's do Africa. Urine. Medicinal. Africa, urine, medicinal. Ew. Okay. But it gets worse, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Africa, urine. Okay. So next sentence I'm going to give to Liana. In many e middle, in, sorry, let me start that again. In many Middle Eastern countries, camel meat is served at feasts. Meat? Yeah, meat for sure. I feel like we should mention this though. Where? Where? Because we just mentioned cow. Yeah. Okay. So here's the good news about Middle Eastern. It is the name of a region, right? An area. 
that has countries in it. But because it's a proper noun, meaning it's the name of that area, we can count it as one word. So that's the good news. So I feel like we should say Middle Eastern as one word and then meat and, 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 feast? and feast. Yep, I like that. So let's do, make sure to capitalize that because they're proper nouns, right? Middle Eastern. We can count that as one. And then meat and then feasts. Middle Eastern meat feasts. Okay, uh, Lacey's turn. We're here at the sentence that says nomads. Remember, those are people that don't have a home. They're just traveling all the time. They don't have a home to go to. They, they bring their home with them, basically. So nomads in Northern Africa may drink camel blood mixed with camel milk to sustain them on long <laughs> desert journeys. Sorry, it's the gross one again, but it's really long. So we're going to have to figure this out, Lacey. What are we going to do with that? Hmm. Nomads. Nomads, I think that's important. Was in Africa? Yeah, you know, I was thinking that too, but then that wastes like three words already. What if we what if we just mention nomads but not the Africa part? Would that be okay? Because it feels like this other stuff is important to remember in that sentence. Well, what else do you think? So we could do nomads, maybe Africa, let's think about that, but what else should we mention in the outline? Camel, camel milk? Yeah. So maybe we don't need camel because we know we're talking about camels already. What if we did, what if we did nomads, blood and milk? And then, I don't know, long desert journeys. Hmm. Maybe we can just remember that part. Or we can put a symbol or something. Yeah, I wonder what kind of symbol we could do there. It's a good idea. Desert. How can we draw the desert? Hmm. We can... Well, let's get the words down and think about that. Okay, so we got nomads. And then we've got blood, milk. And then let's draw something that shows long journeys in the desert. What do you think, Lacey? Did you have an idea? Maybe we can put like a long line and then like dots for desert. Because there's sand and stuff. Mm hmm Yeah, that's a good one. Do you have an idea, Liana? Maybe we could put a line and a cactus. Ooh, a cactus. Yeah? Anybody else have any ideas? I like, let's try this. Maybe we could do a little stick figure of, of somebody on there, too. Like, what if we did just did, like, a long line... I like, how do we draw a cactus? Let's see. Kind of like that. And then maybe a guy there. <laughs> I bet your cactus is way better than mine. I'm not an artist. Mm. I can do a stick figure. That's about it. Oh, you know what? They're, they're, the cactus kind of like goes up higher. I think I did. That's where I messed up, I think. And it's too wide. I think a cactus is skinnier than that. Anyway, whatever makes sense to you, this represents a long journey in the desert. <laughs> so if you can, if that helps you remember it, then good. Okay, good job, Lacey. And then how, how about cash? Let's do the next one. Um, yours says camel hair is light and strong. You got the easy one. What can we put there for that? Hair? Yes. Light? Yes. Strong? 
Yes, I agree. Hair, because we know we're talking about camels already. So hair, light, strong. Interesting, huh? About camels. I didn't know that. Seems like their hair is kind of short though. So it'd be hard to, I wonder how they, how they make those blankets. So this one's for Phoenix here. Um, thus, that just means like, therefore, or uh, just telling you the next thing, right? It is useful for clothes, blankets, tents, and rugs. So we're going to have to narrow this down a little bit. You can pick a couple of things there. What do you think? Uh, could Arab culture be one word or would it be split up into two? Oh, we're right here at the sentence before that. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, that's, right here. It's useful. For clothes, blankets, tents, and rugs. Useful clothes, blankets, and tents. Yeah, that's four words. So, but oh. you could do, you could just. Useful clothes yeah. and blankets. Yeah, I would do that. I would put useful as important useful and then you guys can pick what two things you want to put on your outline uh, i'm going to put clothes and blankets but if you like the idea of putting tents and rugs or any combination of those you can't so remember this is just a report this is like you're summarizing what you learned here so you don't have to have everything on there and if you want to draw a tent or, so, or a blanket or you could you could do that I'm just gonna put clothes, blanket, oops. I mean, you could draw a little, how do you draw a tent? Oh, that actually kind of looks like a tent maybe. <laughs> or a swing set. <laughs> <laughs> You could, if you can draw a tent, draw a tent. You probably can draw one better than me. Okay. Or rug, draw a little, little rug or something like that. Last one, this is gonna be from Mariah. The very last sentence says, in Arab cultures, the camel symbolizes endurance and patience. Endurance, mm -hmm. patience, and um, what well, uh, cultures? Yeah, that's a tough one, huh? Because we want to mention Arab. What if, uh, because that word symbolizes is also really good. That's telling us that in their culture, it symbolizes so. Hmm, I like cultures too. Maybe we could put, maybe we could put cultures and just say in some cultures, we don't have to say Arab cultures, but what if we put cultures and then symbolizes And then either endurance or patience, we could pick one. Kind of like endurance. That That's that word that means they can go a long time without sleeping or resting or drinking water or anything. They just can go a long time, probably without food even. They're very sturdy, hardy animals. And that's why they used them during you know, with their traveling and stuff. Culture symbolizes endurance. But if you like patience, if you want to mention that, you can use patience instead. So remember, excuse me, with these keyword outlines, you're eventually going to start doing them all by yourself. And that means everybody's is going to be slightly different because there's a lot of good keywords in there. And we're just doing these together for now, but eventually you're going to start deciding yourself which words you think are the best words to use in your outline. They don't have to be exactly the same.
but that's how we decided to do this one. Okay, so you did it. Good job, guys. So we're done with this Roman numeral two. Remember that represents the second paragraph. Now I wanna show you something on the back of your keyword outline. So just turn your page over to the back side because we're gonna talk a little bit more about that who, which clause. I know it's new to you guys, so I wanna make sure you fully understand how to use that in here. So at the top, let's just put who slash which clause. This is on the back side. If you have stuff already written on the back side, just go down a little bit. And we're gonna underline that who, which clause. And I'm gonna give you an example of how to fix a sentence to add a who or which clause to it. So what I want you to do is skip a line and then I want you to copy this sentence down. This is from the first paragraph, by the way. The third species, this is from the first paragraph, is the Bactrian, we're gonna capitalize that, Camel. Remember that from the first paragraph? I just want you to copy that sentence. The third species is the Bactrian camel. Actually, it was the wild Bactrian camel, but I forgot that word wild. Anyway, you get the idea. The third species is the Bactrian camel. Now let's say right here, I want to add the word a who or which clause. And let's go, let's think about that for a minute. We're not talking about people, so I can't use who, but we are talking about camels, animals, which I'm going to use the word which. We're also talking about species. So what if I put a little carrot symbol here? That's what that's called. It's like a little arrow. And the word which. And you know what? It's bothering me that I forgot the word wild. So let's put another symbol right here, a little carrot symbol and put wild because I'm bothered I forgot that word. Anyway, so now it says the third species, which is the wild Bactrian camel. Is that sentence complete? If you think it's complete, give me a thumbs up. If you think it's incomplete, give me a thumbs down. What do you think? The third species, which is the wild Bactrian camel. Is that a good one? Thumbs up or thumbs down? I see Mariah says thumbs up. What do you guys think? Cat, Phoenix, and some of you are kind of like this, like, I'm not sure, is it complete? It's kind of a sideways thumb, I'm not sure. Okay, this is actually incomplete. So it should be a thumbs down. The reason is, we remember how I told you that the the word which or who steals the verb from the sentence. So I want you to draw a little arrow from which to is right there. Draw a little arrow for your notes. That means which takes away the verb from the sentence. And so now you need another verb after it. So it needs to say something more. And if I look at my notes, I know that they're found in the Gobi Desert. Remember that part where it talks about how it's found in the Gobi Desert? So I can say now the, the third species, by the way, I need a comma here, before which the third species, which is the Bactrian camel, we're gonna change that period now to a comma because we're gonna add more. Skip a line and put lives in the Gobi desert, period. Right on top of that word lives, I want you to put a V, that stands for verb. Right on top of is, we forgot to put that, let's put a V for verb there for is, okay? So I want to make sure you guys understand you can't just add who or which to a sentence. You can't just stick it in there because what it does is take away the verb from the rest of the sentence. So now it says the third species, 
sorry, the third species, which is the wild Bactrian camel, lives in the Gobi Desert. Now it makes sense. That's a good sentence because we have more information and we have another verb after it. So when you're looking for a place in your story, in your not your story, but your article, your, your report, don't just add who or which. You got to look at the whole sentence. And then if it steals the verb away, you got to have another verb after it. So be thinking of that. When you guys are looking for a place for a who, which, I know we're out of time, but on your checklist, remember, you have two things now to add to your each paragraph, an L-Y adverb and a who, which clause. That's why I want to make sure to show you, you can't just add who or which. You got to make sure that the whole sentence makes sense. All right. Does anybody have any questions about that? No. Okay. Then you're good to go. What you're going to do is... Write paragraph two. You're going to keep going under paragraph one that you already wrote. You're going to keep going on to the second paragraph. Make sure you indent for your paragraph because it's a new paragraph. Okay. But put it on the same paper that you had this paragraph on. You're just going to keep going. Okay. And then you're going to turn that in to Google Classroom. All right, you guys. Good job today. That was a lot. <laughs> You did great. You have a question, Mariah?